This week on Machinery Pete TV, Red Power fuels this Tarkio, Missouri sale with a Case IH Magnum 235 leading the way. A dealership has a rare opportunity to sell some rare tractors and the story of a man and his John Deere A. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery PTV coming at you today from Tarkio, Missouri. And it's just a couple weeks before Christmas as we film the sale today. And that's fitting because we've got some real uh, shiny presents for people here, some lucky buyers today. Three awesome red tractors and some John Deere planting equipment. A little bit of red, a little bit of green. Before we watch these babies sell, let's throw it back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Farmers getting clarity this week as the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against a petition to halt the use of several over-the-top dicamba herbicides. That means farmers will be allowed to use their existing stocks of the products. It comes at a time when many farmers are under state deadlines to spray those products, many facing deadlines to spray by the end of this month. Now, under EPA guidance, farmers can use the existing stocks in their possession as of June 3rd, and all applications must be completed no later than July 31st. But this ruling doesn't change the earlier decision by the same court, which said that it was vacating the federal registration for the three over-the-top products. So what will this mean when it comes to spraying these products? For next season, one agricultural attorney says next year may be challenging because the manufacturers will need to be granted a new federal registration for 2021 and beyond. There could be positive new developments in trade with China. Bloomberg reporting Beijing plans to increase buys of American ag in order to comply with the phase one trade deal. Bloomberg saying it comes following talks between U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and China's top foreign policy official at Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. Now sources say the country will increase buys of soybeans, corn and ethanol. Let's check on some recent prices from around the country. That's it for news. I'll send you back to Machine Repeat. Well, folks, good, clean, used loader tractors have been pretty hot the last couple years. And stay tuned. We're going to see if that trend holds on this 2012 Case H Puma 160 with a loader and a 95-inch bucket, 1,863 hours on it. Hey folks, I'm here with owner Mike Murphy. Mike, I tell you what, you've got some awful clean machinery here. Yeah, um, took me a while to get it cleaned up, but uh, it's ready to go. Everything's looking good. I understand that taking care and keeping keeping your machinery clean has always been a big, uh, big piece of how you farm. Yeah, well, uh, my wife claims I have uh, OCD, and uh, so I, I don't I don't disagree with her. What has that been like? Uh, you know, starting out young here and now retiring. How, how are you guys feeling? Um, life is uh, all about uh, accumulating memories. We're, we're just going to take a different path from here and sure. go down a different road and collect a few different memories. Hopefully we've had good memories up to now and hopefully we can get some more. 
Now the Puma, the, the, the 215, I don't see many of those around. Right. Um, how long did you buy this new? I bought it new, it's a 2011. Okay. Uh, I kind of wanted a shorter wheelbase tractor. I used it on the planter and then I wanted to use it for other things, maybe for hay work. Okay, been a good tractor for and, you? Uh, I, yeah, it's a real nice tractor. I like that tractor. Well, 10 months ago, folks, right near where I live in southeast Minnesota, we saw a 2012 Case H Puma 160 with no loader, just under 1,300 hours on itself for 76,000 bucks. Now, in today's auction here in northwest Missouri, we've got another 2012 Puma 160, but this one's got an L765 uh, loader with a 95-inch dirt bucket, and it's got 1,863 hours. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Machinery Pete TV, brought to you by AgDirect. 
For simple, fast, and flexible equipment financing, ask for Ag Direct. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. Hey folks, I'm here in Seneca, Kansas at Heritage Tractor with Roger Todd. Now Roger, you guys sold a pair of John Deere tractors not too long ago that were unbelievable. Why don't you tell us the story? That's amazing, amazing. It belonged to a local farmer from Frankfort, Kansas. One was a 1992 4960, another one was a 1971 4020. It was actually totally rebuilt by the John Deere factory in Moline. So it was a great experience, you know. And they only did a limited number of 4020s? Correct, only two. Only two? Right, this, this is one, one of two, yeah. And so how many hours were on it, you know, total roughly, or, or since the restoration? A 20. 20 hours. So the guy just didn't use it? Didn't use it, you know. Just, it, it, he just liked to look at it and would, took it in a few parades, and that was basically okay. it. And the 4960, that was, uh, was that two-wheeler or mechanical? It was a mechanical front. And how many hours on that one? That had right at 1,013 hours on it. Wow, what was the story? Why the low hours on that one? Well, he bought that tractor in uh, 1995, and um, he always wanted a bigger tractor. The big, biggest tractor he had before that was a 4240, and he was a small farmer, and he actually did a little, uh, education work at the, at the local school, and he bought this tractor, and just plowed with it, did a little bit of grain cart work, and just let it set. That's it. Now you guys got them bought, and then you and our friend Kurt, Kurt Miller, the youth uh, director, did an amazing video. You guys sat and told a story about these tractors, and then how quickly did they both sell after that? I think within 10 days they sold. Were you getting, you must have got a lot of phone calls. A lot of phone calls, yeah. Hey folks, welcome back to Tractor Tales. This week we're in West Texas, just outside of Lorenzo, Texas here, and we're, we're with Marvin Schuff. And Marvin, this is your 1947 John Deere A. Why don't you uh, tell us about it? This tractor was gave to me about three years ago, and uh, it had been set out. Water had got in the engine, and I brought it home, and my, my grandson said, that's yard art, Granddad. Just paint it and park it out there. And I, I said, no, I'm gonna get it running. He, he told his dad, he said, he'll never get that tractor running. But <laughs> I've been around these all my life and I knew I could. So I did, I, I, I had the block redone in the head. And <laughs> the guy that gave it to me come over, he wanted to see it and drive it. And of course I let him and he was, he was really impressed. Not every day we, we run across someone that, that gives someone a tractor. Was this a neighbor or just a friend? Well, he, he, uh, uh, he remodels houses and I'd used him and my daughter had used him and they'd become good friends and, and, he, and he'd seen one I had out here or two because he'd come out and uh, he said, I got one, I'll tell you what, I'll just give you because it had been sitting there for years in the pasture, you know. And I thought, well, okay. So I went and got it and uh, it was a, like I say, it was a mess. It blowed mm -hmm. out tires and it was, you know, horrible. My grandson... He's pretty good with a paint gun. He's painted several for me. It's a little dusty now, but this is West Texas, and you got you have dust. Uh, yes. It's just part of it. Now, what is again? What is the guy who gave it to you? What does he say when he sees it now? Oh yeah, <laughs> he he was uh, he drove it in, in the parade that day down here, and he drove it home. He was just tickled. I mean, as he could be. He just yep. Yeah, said, I'll, I'll take it home. I said okay. It's still uh, a lot of fun. Uh, they are, and really, that's all it is. It's fun, you know. And the tractor's not restored, it's just preserved. 
Folks, don't touch that dial. You're not gonna wanna miss our feature item on the show today, this beautiful Case IH Magnum 235. It's a 2012 model, 1,621 hours. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Okay folks, time for our feature item on the show today, this really sharp 2012 Case IH Magnum 235, 1621 hours on it. Now coming into the sale today, the average auction price on a Magnum 235, $83,100, and I've seen them as low as $62,100 and as high as one oh seven five. My there's a tractor there, it's a little more money. 85,000, 85,000, 85,000, 82, 50, now I'm five. 85, give me 83 and do it quick. 83,000, 83, now I'm four. Now 84,000, Canada, get to be four. 84, so goes here. 83, now I'm four. Well, folks, you know the scoop on auctions. It's the same, always will be. Every sale, some stuff sells high, some stuff is a bargain. Now, our feature item on the sale today, this 2012 KSH Magnum 235, 1,621 hours, awesome condition. Sells for 84,000 bucks. I think this was a really good buy given the condition. And honestly, probably a little statement on how we're feeling here in the ag, ag economy late into 2019. My good friends at the Steffes Group of Auction Company I've been working with for 30 years now at a really nice farm auction November 26 down in southwest Minnesota with this really sharp 1979 International 1086 with only 4,251 hours on it, so for $21,250. Now the next day Steffes on their Instagram account posted and said, folks that's the highest 1086 we've ever sold and it's one of the highest ones I've ever seen as well, in fact the 10th highest in the last 20 years. Now if we pull back just a little bit and look at 1086 values, the current average auction price this year is $8,671 and it's actually up 13.4% over last year's average. Now that $21,250 price that's the 10th highest last 20 years, it's also the third highest in just over the last six years. Now let's take a look at the two, only two ones that sold higher. Here's a picture of a 1977 model 1086 that amazingly had only 990 actual hours on it. It sold on a May 27, 2019 farm auction in Sedalia, Missouri for $27,000. And from there we go to this 1979 model 1086 with 3,826 hours on it. it. Sold on a farm auction in Atkins, Iowa, December 17, 2016, went for $24,750. Now what's the highest auction price I've seen on a 1086 the last 20 years? Well, here's a picture of it folks. A 1979 model, 2185 hours, one owner, sold on a farm auction in Northwest Ohio August 20th of 2011, went for $29,000. Hey folks, thanks for joining us here in Tarkio, Missouri this week for the farm retirement auction for Mike and Krista Murphy, longtime subscribers to our machine repeat auction price data. And tell you what, these red tractors, they had beautiful condition. I thought a pretty good buy in that Magnum 235, and I thought the hot seller on the sale today was that Puma 160 with a loader. Now tune in next week, who knows what bargains we might have for you. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support.
Sullivan Auctioneers. Let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.